Hello, I'm Sven Greber, Project Leader for LexD, and in this video, I'm going to be looking at the LexD instance or guest API, effectively um, the API that LexD exposes to its containers and virtual machines that can be used to both um, access data uh, that's exposed to, uh, to the guest, as well as report some stuff back to, to the host system. That's not an API that, that many users are necessarily aware of or have made much use of. Currently, the, the biggest consumer of this is Cloudinet, which uses it to pull the, um, the vendor and user configuration for the instance. So um, basically what's supported in that API, um, well, quite, quite a few things. Um, it allows for accessing basic instance metadata. It allows for uh, what's needed for Cladinate provisioning. It exposes uh, some details around the devices attached to the instance. It also uh, exposes some of the configuration keys, not all of them for security, security reasons. It allows the instance to report its uh, readiness. Yes. Uh, back to the to the whole system and it also allows uh, for something that's a bit of an edge case but allows downloading images from the host LexD into uh, nested LexD. so that's something we added uh, to support some specific use cases there um, it's uh, that api unlike what you might be familiar with in the public cloud is not uh, using normal networking so it's not exposed over like a a network address. Instead, we expose it over a Unix socket. So in containers, it's direct, it's directly exposed by the host XD as a Unix socket. Inside of a VM, it's um, provided through VSOC uh, and then forwarded to Unix socket by the LexD agent that runs inside of the VM. From a security standpoint, there are a couple of knobs that you can do. Uh, one option is you can completely turn it off. So there's a security dev LexD config key, which defaults to true. So the API by default is enabled. But uh, if you don't want your guest to have access to that, you can turn it off, at which point it just disappears from the instance. Similarly, that uh, feature I mentioned around uh, downloading images, by default, that's not enabled. Uh, you can turn it on. And if you do, the only images that are exposed from the host to the guests are images that are either cached or that are marked as public. So uh, purely private images that someone would have generated, those are not exposed at all. And that's effectively it as far as what's, um, what the API does. Um, as you can see here, we do have documentation for it, which shows the, the, rough, the rough structure of the API, uh, what you can get from there. In this case, like the, the, I was looking at the image download. Um, and yeah, the normal way I tend to access it is over curl. Uh, curl has a mode to access a Unix socket instead of a network address, so that makes it pretty convenient. And that's what I'm going to be showing you now uh, in the demo part. So um, here I've got two instances. I've got one container, one virtual machine. U1 is a container, V1 is a VM. And if we go look in them, inside them, so if I exec at U1, we'll see a device here, devlexd sock, which is the socket to access the API. And the way you would access it is using, in this case, curl. Uh, like that, and then root of the API, and there you go. The same can be done inside of a virtual machine. As mentioned, the same socket will exist. Ownership is slightly different because it's the um, agent providing it, but the general structure and behavior is exactly the same. Now, if I go and turn it off, so you want security, well, actually, let's do it while I'm inside the instance to show that this is live. So if I do you want security deflex the false, like the entire slash devlex the path is just gone at that point. If I do it on the VM, the behavior is slightly different. I think the directory will still exist, but the file inside it is gone. And if I turn it back on, then it reappears. And we can do the same thing for the container. Turn it back on, and here we go. Now, as far as doing some stuff on there, the first thing I can show is just the state. So if we look at U1 here, you can see its state is currently showed as running. If we wanted to report it as ready, we can do a patch request with data uh, state ready. 
and now it's marked as ready. And the VM is marked as running. If we run the query here, it similarly goes to ready. So that's currently the main thing that, well, pretty much the only thing that the guest can report back to Lexi is just saying that it's ready or not. Uh, you should actually be able to move it back to running as well, I believe. Uh, in basic running, okay. Uh, or started, I think it's the state. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can go back that way. There we go. Now, if we want to look at the rest of that API a bit, um, let's start by looking at the metadata, maybe. So that's an endpoint called meta data that's meant for cloud net consumption it just gives the uh, unique id of the instance what it is its host name um, in the api route there's actually some more details here too you can see that it's the state is ready uh, you can see that it's a container and the location would be set with the name of the cluster member it's on that particular field is interesting if you're then running another kind of distributed workload or distributed database or something like that which could benefit from knowing what system it's on to better align its availability zones or failure domains. So that's why we expose that particular data and it's been quite useful. All right, so other than just the metadata, uh, the other thing we can do is access slash config. Here we can see there's one config key, it's already exposed called user.foo. You can access its value by just accessing it that way. You can see that it's blind in this case. Um, you'll notice that it does not expose config keys outside of the user dot uh, prefix. That's normal, it's intentional. We don't want to uh, expose too much information that could be used by a guest to potentially attack LexD or to abuse its configuration. Uh, there's another exception there, which would be that the CloudInit configuration keys are also exposed because CloudInit inside of the guest does need to get to them. So if we do CloudInit dot user dash data foo, um, we'll see that key also appear here and it's it can be queried that way um, that's most of the config side of things the other thing that can be done is uh, devices so if we query such devices instead here we can see there are two devices if zero which is a network device uh, we can see what network is connected to what its name is inside the instance it's a nick fine and same thing for the root disk. It's also exposed that way. And I'm not go gonna always show it in both VM and container because it's the same. Um, but if we go inside the VM in this case, you can see effectively the exact same thing there. Now, the other thing you can do if you, if you want to know when something changes, uh, there is an endpoint called events. And that endpoint can do both long pole HTTP, which is what Kurt's gonna do here, but can also do WebSocket. So it kind of depends on what you prefer um, when consuming it. So if I query this uh, and say, I go and set u1 user.blah um, abcd. Now we see there's an event here that's a nice timestamp associated with it. It's a config change. And it shows that the key user blah was set from not being set effectively, so MT to value ABCD. Uh, the same is true of devices. So if we add a device, um, what can we do? Let's say we add a disk. So um, passing my home directory, for example. So disk source equals home path, and we attach it to SRV home. Here we're getting another event of type device this time, which shows action was added. The config is, um, it shows the source path, target path, that it's a disk, and what the name of the device is. At that point, if we go look, we're gonna see that this has indeed been passed through. So there we go. That's the, um, that's the events API. And uh, the last thing to show is that uh, image download feature. So for that, you first need to set a config key on the instance. So it's security, deflex the images, set up the true. It's currently only supported on containers, but with the recent work we've done around bi-directional uh, API, we should be able to also enable that for VMs, just not something we've done yet. So now that I've enabled that, what it lets me do is um, go and do curl 
images and then a fingerprint of an image that's public. So if I go query this, we can see that this image is not actually public, but it's in the other situation where it is cached. So we can see cached yes, which makes it available. And then search export. If we do this, curl is, says that this is a, a binary, so it will download it, but we can do download to the image file. And now we just downloaded 270 something megs almost immediately. It shows the average download speed that's close to a gigabyte per second. And then the image is here. And oops, we don't have file apparently. Uh, it's file uh, package, I guess so. Yeah, so it just shows data. Um, that's normal. It's because Lexity actually uses a multi part HTTP type image. For this, so if we try and look, we can see here it is a HTTP header, well, it's um, multi-part MIME type. So the first chunk is the metadata containing the metadata file, followed by the actual binary image here, which is then going to be a QEMU image for a VM image in this case. Normally, you don't access that uh, particular endpoint directly through curl. What happens is that if you run next day inside of the VM, when will come time for it to download an image, instead of just going straight to the internet, it's going to see that DevLexD exists. It will try to download it from the host. Uh, and then if not available, then it will go on the network. So it's effectively an optimization there. So we don't needlessly hit the network when our host system already has the image we're about to download. And that's pretty much it for DevLexD. Um, I hope this was useful. As I said, I don't think it's an API that, that many um, many have used outside of effectively ourselves um, as part of uh, the CAD network we've done, or in this case, LexD itself using the API to download images from the, the host LexD. Um, but it's very convenient, especially with the addition of the ready state that uh, was introduced, I believe, in LexD 5.5, um, which now allows uh, for your init scripts or anything like that to report to LexD that the instance is ready, which then makes it kind of easier to get an overview of what's going on in all of the different instances. The, the fact that you can also access uh, user config keys that easily means that you can use this to, to effectively provide configuration data to your instances and then I have in the scripts or your workload inside of the instance access that LexD, pull that configuration from there uh, and then use it. And if you want to go one step further, the fact that we do have an events API lets you even run a daemon that can uh, notice changes and effectively reconfigure your instance if you want to based on the configuration that you're putting in NextD itself. So there's quite a bit of flexibility there. Uh, definitely hoping that more people will start uh, making use of it. And yeah, if you've got any questions around it, feel free to leave them below in the comment section or you can go on our community forum as always and we'll be happy to help you there. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.